Hello there. It's rapidly approaching New Year's Eve. Time for fireworks and celebration. I seem to specialise in doing these things when fireworks are involved. And we have fantastic celebrations. I don't know whether you stay up uh, until midnight to see the New Year in. And it all just seems so exciting. And then the next day, everything seems much like it did the previous day. I have really good memories of uh, the millennium. Do you remember how long ago that seems though? It's unbelievable, isn't it? It's uh, 21 years ago. Or was it 22? And I can never count properly with these things. Anyway, it's a long time ago. But we had such a great time. It was packed going up to London. And uh, we went with friends and the trains were packed and the embankment was packed. And the fireworks were completely disappointing. And everyone was in a really good mood. Then the next day... Well, it's just another day, 1st of January 2000. It seemed much the same as the 31st of December 1999. Well, New Year is a time to look back and to look forward, even if the days don't really seem all that different. And of course, this year when we look back, uh, we've got a lot to look back on and not much of it has been great. It's been a very difficult year. As I was trying to indicate on Christmas Eve, lots of people have had difficult years down through history. That doesn't make it any better for us, does it? It's still been difficult and some of you watching this have had a really difficult time. I'm very conscious that as a pensioner in lockdown with someone I love, I've had it so much easier than many. And I want to reassure you that as a leadership team at the church, we've been concerned about the way in which everyone's been experiencing this particular time. We've tried hard to be concerned for those who are by themselves, for those who are looking for support. We hope you feel that you've been supported as much as we possibly can. I just want to express appreciation for how hard Steve and Helen, our ministers, have worked so hard to try and make sure that services go out on a Sunday morning, that people feel included, that people know that they haven't been forgotten, the phone calls that have gone on and so on. It's been great from that point of view and I really appreciate the hard work they've put in. Many others have done lots of hard work. I won't be able to mention everyone by name, but I do want to mention uh, Jill Mitchell, for example, worked so hard to keep with the team, to keep uh, Promised Land going, and uh, I just know some of that's been really exciting. I even had a Promised Land Christmas party and played Pass the Parcel on Zoom. Don't ask me, you'll have to ask Jill. But she made it, and she did it, and that was a great effort. And then uh, Alison and Steve working with the young people, and again, we haven't seen them on a Sunday, but uh, they've had regular sessions with them. And of course, the young people, many of them have stepped up to the mark in all many different ways. And we're really grateful for those in the tech team who've been uh, helping us to keep going, really, with the services on a Sunday. Put an enormous amount of work in, really dedicated, really skillful. Us old people don't really know quite how these things work. But thankfully, they do. And it's great they've been able to be part of it and uh, help to keep it going. So as I said, I can't thank everyone by name, but I do want to thank you because you have played your part, even just by watching these midweek reflections, by being part of the service on a Sunday, by the prayers that you've made for everybody, you've been part of it and you matter and you count. Please keep praying. Keep praying for individuals within the fellowship. Keep praying for the fellowship as a whole. We want to move into 2021 and be as effective as we can as a church in helping people feel valued, appreciated, supported and part of this fellowship. It matters to us and I know it matters to you. Looking forward, we're hoping, we're praying, we're expecting that we'll be able to start to go back into Cooper School at some point, uh, hopefully in January and perhaps have a service each month before Easter. We don't want to look too far ahead. We can't tell what's happening. Lots of promises have been made about when all this would be over. And in one sense, I'm not sure it ever will be over. Life will be different. We can't go back to how it was before. But we can go back, in a sense, or move forward to a new way of being fellowship, of caring for one another, of involving the people who become part of us online. That's an important part of how we move forward as well. That's what we want to try and do. Please pray for the leadership team as we're thinking about these issues trying to do the best we can to make sure the church functions as a church should, caring for its members, but not only that, also caring about people around. One of the challenges for us has been how we can do mission and outreach 
while we've been in these lockdown situations when we're not really seeing people. Thrilled to know that uh, Healing on the Streets was back functioning before Christmas. Lots of people wanting to be prayed for. And if you don't go out on the streets, you can remember on a Saturday morning, pray for them as they do that. All of these things are things that we can do. Helen's doing a fantastic job on Graven Hill. Keep praying for her. We're hoping to find ways in the new year of, in, of letting you know more about what's going on, of involving you further. But she's a vital part of what we're doing as a church in our outreach in Bicester and in this neighbourhood. It's great that we were able to see her move in just in time, as it were, before lockdown began. And she's made so many relationships that matter, met so many people who are looking for help and support. And it's great it can come from somebody who can represent the church and represent Jesus in that way on Graven Hill. Do keep praying for Helen and Nick as they live there on Graven Hill. But of course this applies to all of us. We need to all keep finding ways in which we can represent Jesus in the way that we live and in the way that we speak. And that's part of the ongoing challenge that we all want to uh, take on in 2021. Because that's part of what living for Jesus is all about. Advent is a time for looking back to the birth of Jesus. It's a time too for looking forward to the coming, second coming of Jesus. The Bible's very clear that Jesus came once and we celebrate that. And we celebrate the fact that he's promised that he's going to return. So Advent has this kind of double meaning and it's part of how we can be as we look forward to what Jesus has for us. I wrote this uh, a while back. I need to live my life so that I'm ready every day. But then the message of Advent is that Jesus can be born into our lives and we can know his presence by his spirit. If we are living our lives as though it were Christmas every day, then the world will be blessed, will be blessed, and will be ready. Paul wrote this to Timothy. He said, our master Jesus Christ is on his way. He'll show up right on time, his arrival guaranteed. Loving Father, creator of the universe, author of salvation, thank you for all that the first advent means for the world and has meant for me. I want to celebrate the life that you have given me by living it for you and the people you have made. I want to celebrate this life in anticipation of the life that is to come. Even so, Lord, come. Amen.